Welcome to the lesson on roots. Since roots are based on the laws of powers, you must have seen and understood the lesson on calculating with powers. Then we can start. In the powers lesson we had learned that if we have something like 3 times 3, then we can write this as 3 squared, and 3 squared or 3 times 3 is 9. The roots mean if we only have the ending value here in the back, the 9, then we ask which number was multiplied by itself, in order to get this number. And to indicate this, we write the second root of 9. So here we had 3 squared. The 2 goes up to this sign up here. And the 9 we write under this line and the second root of 9 would then have the value 3. So we ask here, which number must be multiplied twice with itself, that we get 9. And the solution would be 3. Because 3 times 3 or 3 squared is 9. Now a word about the root sign. As you can see, this is actually an R with an extended top part. And the word root comes from the Latin radix, which translated means root. And this word can also be found today with the word radishes, the root. By the way, we also say root extraction for calculating a root. So remember, if we have this 9, then we want to go back to its source. To its root. In this case that's 3. Of course we can extend the power, for example, we can now write 3 times 3 times 3. Then 3 cubed would stand here and that gives 27. And then we could write. Third root of 27 is, write 3, because 3 cubed is 27. Here we can once again write a 3. Then we get 3 to the 4th and that's 81. And of course, now we have to change our notation here. This is the fourth root of 81 and yes, again it is 3. A short word on the terms. This number, which stands here in front of it on the root sign, is called the root exponent. For powers we said exponent, here it is the root exponent. That down here, that was the power value, is called the radicand. This is the root sign. And the result is called the root value. And the root value finally gives us the base of the power. If we have something like that, 3 to the 4th is 81. Fourth root of 81 is 3. By the way, we can also write it as follows. We say 81 is 3 to the 4th, that is, we enter 3 to the 4th for the 81 here. And we see, 4th root of 3 to the 4th is 3. Then if we have 3 cubed is 27 and the 3rd root of 27 is 3. Then we can put the 3 cubed in for this 27 and we see the 3rd root of 3 cubed is 3. So generally we can say, we change the 3 to x, and change the 4 to n, and then we see the nth root of x to the n as again x. The power and the root cancel each other out if n has the same value. Therefore we also say that the root is the inverse of the power. They reverse each other. If you have problems with roots you can find a program on our website that you can practice with. Here you see the second root of 9 is 3 because 3 squared is 9. If we now set the second root out of 16, the result is 4 because 4 squared is 16. Of course you can also change the root exponent here. For example, the third root of 8 is 2 because 2 cubed is 8. Besides, you will find that many values often have decimal places, which are then rounded. Don't let that bother you. Another note about notation. If you have the second root of 9, you may omit the 2 here in front, and just write root of 9. This is called the square root, just like with powers where we call an exponent of 2 the square.
Remember, without the number on it, it's always the second root. Let's move on to the rules for calculating roots. Before that, however, we need to understand the connection between roots and powers. Let's use the example of the second root of 3 to the 4. And let's take this 3 to the 4 apart as 3 squared times 3 squared. Remember, the exponents 2 and 2 are added together and we get the 4. Now we can figure that out. 3 squared is 9 and 3 squared is 9 and we get the second root of 9 times 9. 9 times 9, we can now write as a square. The second root of 9 squared, here the 2's match up, and the 9 remains. Next let's take this 9 down here and try to make a power out of it. 9 comes from 3 times 3, so we can write, it's equal to 3 squared. At this point we want to change this too. We want to make a fraction out of it. Why? You will see soon. 2 down here. And let's write it now as 2 over 1. Now let's expand this 2 over 1 by multiplying by 2. We get 4 for the numerator and 2 for the denominator. That is 4 halves. So that's 2. Now we are going to put that 4 halves up here as the root exponent. We write it as equal to 3 to the 4 halves. And now we realize that 3 to the 4 halves is the same as the second root of 3 to the 4. Let's write both next to each other. And here we recognize a new rule. If we have the root we need to do the following. Here we write the radical, the 3, as the base of the power. Then we take this 4 here, as an exponent. And we take this root exponent, the 2, as the denominator of the exponent. 4 goes up, 2 goes down in the fraction. That means we get 3 to the 4 halves. And more generally we can replace the 2 with an A. And the 4 with a b. Same thing here. And the 3 becomes the variable x. And that is our new rule. The eighth root of x to the b is the same as x to the b divided by a. With this rule, we can save a lot of computational effort. For example take this problem. Compute the fourth root of 3 to the 8. Some would first calculate 3 to the 8. That comes to 6561 and from this the fourth root seems a bit difficult. Instead, we can apply this rule here. This means we convert this root into a power. And that gives 3 to the 8 quarters. And clearly 8 quarters is 2. So we can write 3 squared. And 3 squared is 9 again. As you can see, we came to our result very quickly. If you have a root, such as the root of 9, you should turn that into a power. First of all this is the square root. So we write the second root of 9. Then we rewrite 9 as 9 to the 1, because according to the power law, 9 to the 1 is 9. And now we have this form here. Eighth root of x to the b. That is the second root of 9 to the 1. And we can convert it into 9 to the 1 half. And of course, if you have a value like x to the 1 third, then you know, that's the third root of x. And here instead of 3 you can use any natural number. So now we can formulate in general a variable x to the 1 over n as the nth root of x. Well, let's continue with the multiplication of roots. If you have something like the 8th root of x times the 8th root of y, that's equal to the 8th root of x times y. You are allowed to pull the root out on both factors. Why is that? Let's see. To prove this, we convert the two roots into powers. We know that here from x we can make x to the 1 and from y also y to the 1. Now we can pull the root exponent in the exponent and write it as a power. We get x to the 1 over a. 
times y to the 1 over a. Now let's recall the laws of powers, since we learned that we can have an equal exponent on two different bases. That means this is the same as x times y to the 1 over a. And here we turn the exponent back to a root. That means we get the eighth root from x times y to the 1. We can take away the exponent 1 here, and also the parenthesis, and we get the eighth root of x times y, just like up here.